Hello and welcome to JAMP's presentation of Enabling the Instructional Non-IT Crowd with JAMP Pro. I'm Dave Saltmarsh and I'm joined today by one of our educational system engineers, Cy Cook. We'll be spending some time going over the roles and responsibilities that could uh, take on some of JAMP Pro's capabilities within an organization outside of the traditional IT department. We'll show how to create some accounts uh, in JAMP Pro to give access, limited access, to only specific areas. So I will spend some time going over the workflows that the IT will likely need to set up. We'll start with some very basic workflows that, of course, could apply to more complicated situations if you choose. And at the end, we'll go over some of the workflows from the execution perspective. What would it look like from the end user? Before we get into the details of the presentation, I would like to highlight the fact that we've done some other presentations on this topic. About a year or so ago, I did a presentation on bridging IT silos with the Casper Suite to bring systems and instructional IT together. You may go the Casper Suite, and for those that don't realize it, we uh, at Jamf have changed our name of our product from the Casper Suite to Jamf Pro to simplify things. However, the product has remained the same. You'll have an opportunity to go on and watch some of our videos from the recent JAMP Nation user conference where we had some customers come on and talk about how the leadership has shifted things to be more inclusive, not only with JAMP Pro, but within other programs within their organization. And I would like to highlight one quick customer video that we created while we were at JNUC of Tiffany, who is perhaps a non-traditional user of JAMP Pro. Hi, I'm Tiffany Kelly. I'm one of three technology coaches that support teachers with tech integration. I was a classroom teacher for you know 14 years and then I've stepped into the role of tech coach. So I think that really helps with not being necessarily a tech trained person, but someone that really understands the teacher and student experience. So we're best able to kind of bridge that gap between our information team of tech and our teachers and students. Some of you may be wondering what is Jamp Pro or formerly known as the Casper Suite. Uh, others are current customers that are well aware that we are in fact uh, the leading Apple device management solution that focuses solely on the Apple platform that allows people to uh, manage their devices down to the individual level to mass customize the experience of the end user. When we think about the non-IT crowd, the non-traditional roles, uh, some of those people are managing every aspect of the Casper Suite. We have some people that are instructional technology specialists that are having full access. But really what we're looking to talk about today are what are the roles that might start taking on some activities? We know we already have some customers that are giving access to technology coaches, mobile coordinators, library media specialist staff. We also have some that have handed it down to other roles that you may even think are further from that IT level type role, like a building principal or a department leader. We've even had a district talk about handing down some tasks, perhaps it's just enrollment, to a student help desk. And the key thing is, to understand this is not an all or nothing proposal. Uh, we know that there might be some people in certain buildings that are ready for these abilities while another building in the same district, you might not have any staff you're prepared to hand these roles down to. I'd like to go over you know, a more visual approach to what are some of the concepts uh, we're talking about because this is uh, the type of information we've gathered from our customers. We know we have uh, full IT departments using Jamf Pro. We're looking to support or at least promote the concepts that other people are doing for handing down these tasks. And when we think about the roles involved, I, I gave you that list uh, of, of the specific types of people in districts that might be doing some things inside Jamf Pro. But here are some of the, the capabilities they are doing or maybe looking to do. Now, from the teacher perspective, you know, Jamf uh, provided Casper Focus about four years ago and handed down some of the basic tasks like password uh, changing or 
passcode changing right into the teacher's hands. Well, Apple's now taken that on. And so, Jamf, while we still have a product, Casper Focus, that is uh, available p- for people, many people are switching over to Apple Apple's Apple Classroom. So the teacher has some basically some mobile device management capabilities right in their hands. They're also tying that into iTunes U, where teachers can uh, give out assignments, collect assignments back from students, provide feedback directly to that student, and uh, distribute some content right out of there. So Apple's really taking on that aspect for the teacher. So the primary thing we're going to talk about today is beyond the teacher. What are the other roles wanting to do? What what tasks are they hoping to accomplish that can be more right in the time that they're needed, more timely, and to help really facilitate that transformational change going on in the classroom? So most of these things are cumulative. They're not specific to just these roles, but here are some of the things we're hearing that a program specialist like a STEM coordinator or math or reading specialist is trying to do. They like to be able to put students into groups and, and modify that group membership, and it could be for uh, website access. It could be for camera access. They like to apply restrictions, and uh, I guess that goes back to that, uh, that way to do that for like the camera restriction. Hide and show apps. You know, once upon a time, we were limited to uh, guided access that you could put a student in one app. Well, with Apple's new capability of show hide, technically with a couple check boxes, I can have a student's iPad switch over. And even though they normally have 50 apps on that iPad, limit them for a period of time to only four apps. And that may be a better testing environment. Well, Rather than having that at an IT level, perhaps having that at a program specialist level may be uh, more useful to everyone. And the notion that some of those same capabilities could be handed to a building principal, but if you just think about a few things a building principal might want to do is, you know, if a student perhaps has a disciplinary issue, they could be the ones to actually drop them in or modify a a website group and uh, place a student into a restricted website group and or modify what websites are in that filtering group. Media specialists could also do all of those other things I mentioned before, but think about that ability to prop possibly deploy apps. You know, uh, technology really was rooted in the libraries back in the 60s. Uh, It transformed, uh, certainly starting in the 90s where we started having more formal IT departments. But there are a lot of things that we could hand back into the libraries that uh, would have been their role traditionally, traditionally before they perhaps became more complicated. Now that these workflows are simplified, think about handing these back to the practitioner. And that goes, uh, if you think about maybe an instructional coordinator who's that leader in the building, they may be the one that you can rely on to do all of those things, perhaps manage the assignment of the uh, devices, and utilize the new tools like uh, remote locking or remote wiping of a device. That might be one of those things you really want to limit to only one role, whereas uh, many of these could be shared amongst all the different roles. So there's the big picture of some of the things we know are being done by our customers and some of the things customers are asking us about that they maybe didn't realize we have the capability to hand off within Jamf Pro. When you think about the uh, potential of handing off these tasks, uh, we have asked uh, the broad audience of our customers and we've gotten some feedback to recognize that majority of our customers are either already doing this or have a willingness to hand this off. There is a small population that are saying they never would, but when you think about what is causing them to say they never would, it could be the capabilities. It could be that leadership doesn't have the vision to, to, to do this, or they recognize they don't have the ability to do the training they need to do. And we've actually just put out this survey again, and the data is coming back in. And a lot of it does point to the interest in doing such a thing as handing off these tasks, but that they have the lack of training. So if your district is sitting on that fence of not sure, perhaps by the end of the day, you'll recognize how you could. And maybe here at Jamf, we could help you with how to share that training wise. So we're going to talk about some things in a moment when Sai starts showing you inside uh, Jamf Pro about how to create accounts 
how you can have individual accounts, group accounts might be even better because you could set up a group type account that you can apply to and drop principals into or librarians into and that you already have these settings already ready and you can tie it to your active directory. And keeping that in mind, we can even limit things down to an individual building using our sites model. So people don't have to have full access. They could have just access to a group or just to one building as in a site. The other aspect that I, I know from going out and talking to some people, not everybody, even people who have been trained through JAMF, because maybe when they went through their CCT, they were only thinking what they needed to know and what they maybe needed to hand off to someone else they worked directly with. But the fact that we have uh, custom privilege templates that can allow you to create an account for someone that has very limited privileges. You may just want to give them read and update or modify type privileges. Don't give the person create or delete abilities. And that understanding in itself goes a long way to somebody changing their viewpoint to perhaps taking some of the mobile device management capabilities and handing them off to someone else that is traditionally less technical. And as I mentioned in the beginning, you know, this is about mass customizing the approach to this. That's how we take on the end user experience and we recognize it's not one size fits all. Even from one building to the next, one building principal, one library, librarian, or one instructional technology specialist, what privileges you want to give them and what task you want them to take on don't have to be the same. When we look at those MDM tasks and we realize what ones kind of make sense to start looking at maybe handing down gradually, you know, this, this continuum of we're not going to give them carte blanche every single possible task, but what ones would make sense? When we look at commands, that's a really basic area that we could consider handing down to other people. And it doesn't mean that profiles and apps and other security settings aren't things we can hand off. It's just that might be your starting point. Because you realize that a simple updating inventory would meet the needs. Uh, I was speaking to a, one of our schools that has a uh, uh, places students in a restriction if their capacity goes over 85%. They take away the student's camera. And the reason they do that is they want to be able to deploy more apps. And so the dilemma is what happens that day when a student deletes a bunch of photos perhaps or videos and now goes under that 85%, they have to wait till the next day when their device checks in so they can now have access again. Well, if someone close to that student had the ability to update inventory, that would take care of itself right away. And so something as simple as that might be what you want to give the building principal or the librarian. Passcodes. Now, we recognized this years ago that that was one of the top IT uh, trouble tickets coming to them when there were one-to-one -one iPads. And the same as a classroom teacher's perspective, that was one of the top issues they had. Students would come in with their one-to-one -one iPad and sure enough, it would be locked out because they forgot their passcode. And then they weren't able to participate in the activities. Well, we put that in teachers' hands with Casper Focus. And Apple's taken that on with Apple Classroom. At the same time, that can be managed and accessed right inside Jamf Pro. And that could be one of those capabilities you provide somebody like a librarian or an instructional technologist. Uh, loss mode has been a great new feature uh, presented by Apple. And while you may not want to give everybody the access to geolocate or track down the location of a device, we can actually split those capabilities out. Activating loss mode is straightforward. Device is put into loss mode, a message comes up on the device someone else might have access to actually looking at the location. And so wouldn't it be great to be able to let a student identify their device as missing immediately and within moments have someone in, inside the building, inside that organization, apply that without having to reach out and contact IT. But at the same time, we've mitigated those concerns or fears of somebody having too much access. Because that's really what it's about. If we look at some of these capabilities like passcode and content filtering, but when we look at these capabilities, we recognize that we have the potential to mitigate the risks that some people might have when they have concerns of giving these privileges to other people besides IT. The web clip notion is something Sai is going to show you because it may actually make uh, deploying these capabilities and then accessing these capabilities by that end user a lot easier. 
Before Sai gets into showing you, I'd like to go over the, the notion that I, I shared for some of you that maybe have no idea of the concept of how we can uh, delegate down to sites. We have a, a school district and the person that has full access to Jamf Pro can basically access and do something to any iPad, any Mac, uh, to the users in any of the buildings within that organization. However, we can cite things down to give access to someone just inside their particular building, like a high school or one elementary school. So again, that goes a long way to mitigating those concerns of somebody accidentally applying a restriction to a larger group uh, and again, if we go back to don't give them ability to delete or create, just simply modify, we can minimize that potential risk that someone would be concerned about and limit it to a small scope. At the same time, I believe with training and understanding, that's also going to mitigate the concern. But this uh, hopefully will go a long way to helping people realize that they can nano down access in a way. So we can look at the different sites we have in an organization. We can recognize we can give someone access just to that particular site. Now we can go and look at all the different capabilities we have from managing devices and apps and even restrictions. And we can actually go in and just give someone read and edit privileges. So Sai is going to go ahead and go through some workflows just to give an overview of where IT would go to create these workflows. It's not going to be a step-by-step. I certainly recommend you open up one of our quick start guides or our admin guides. And, you know, we're probably talking to the people who've already gone through one of our CCT certification courses, just reminding them where they can go. And this is really an overview so that those that haven't seen inside Jamf Pro can know that this is possible. So, Sai, why don't you take it over? So uh, we're going to get into uh, creating some accounts and, and go over this with some groups as well. Um, so this is uh, just sort of a screenshot of Jamf Pro Server and uh, some elementary principles that we've assigned to each school. Uh, and our IT admin and our librarian have uh, higher access to the full uh, Jamf Pro Server for all of the schools in the district. Um, so from there, uh, you know, we're going to create a group that has uh, similar type privileges. We're going to assign this group to the elementary school. And uh, we can see that here where we're adding that as site access level. From there, we can then start assigning some privileges. Perhaps we assign read privileges broadly across the board. Uh, and then we can get into adding some editing privileges in specific areas around static groups, perhaps, and mobile, app, uh, mobile apps. So those are a few uh, ways that we might you know, tweak their privileges to be able to access and edit just the things that we'd like them to be able to do. From there, we can get into uh, the actions as well. Uh, and those actions are going to be giving you rights like changing passcodes or sending out lost mode, not viewing it, but being able to at least uh, enable that uh, action. From there, we uh, have our static groups that we're going to uh, create for uh, the actual actions. These are where the students will live that we're giving non-IT people uh, the ability to edit these groups so that they can give and take away privileges as needed uh, throughout the school day. Inside one of those groups, we can see uh, some students that we've added here and how we could edit this and search uh, to add new students or take away students' privileges. And now we're going to get into some configuration profile ideas on how we might start to use this. We're going to get into modifying a URL uh, list, essentially, and we'll go to into uh, configuration profiles to do that. From there, we're going to get into our approved URLs for the fourth to sixth grade. And we can, you know, create a content filter uh, with just some, so a white list of URLs that we'd like uh, to be accessible for our students. And these are the only places that they'd be able to go. We can edit this and add additional links as, as we see fit. And then uh, from there, we're going to scope that out to our static group that we created before with our student list in it. So uh, our IT person, our technical person, is creating these configuration profiles and then scoping it out to a group. But the non-IT person is deciding who is in this static group and who is actually affected by this profile then. Uh, another idea would be uh, perhaps the camera. Uh, and, and that's something that we're not going to allow students to have uh, for certain reasons. And we can get into there and, and turn that camera off and then assign that again to a, a complementary uh, corresponding group for that, that uh, camera to be removed. Then again, our, our non-IT staff will be able to edit that static group and take away the camera from whoever we'd like. 
Another concept would be, you know, giving people the right to uh, applications. Maybe they're non-educational uh, applications that you earn the right to be able to have on your device. And we can uh, make those available inside of self-service uh, in a separate category uh, that only those students would see. We'll take Angry Birds here. And from there, we can add that to that category and then make that available in self-service. Uh, at that point, then, we can start to scope that out to another static group that we've created that corresponds with uh, all of these apps that we're going to give students. And uh, from there, we can then assign those students to that group as a non-IT person again. So again, editing those, that list, searching for new users, and possibly even removing users uh, from that list as well. From there, um, you know, giving these URLs or you know, getting a non-IT person into the Jamf Pro server so that they can uh, you know, edit the things that they need to without browsing around and, and possibly getting to areas that they don't understand or shouldn't be in. We can use web clips to drop these areas right onto their iPad so they would click on a button, edit a list, and then close out of that web browser page and, and go to another one. So this web clip is, is uh, going to the static group for the URLs for the fourth to sixth grade that we created earlier. From there, uh, we're just assigning this to the group of non-IT people that should have access to be able to edit that static group for web clips for the fourth to sixth grade. And, and that's how uh, we would accomplish that type of task and give those type of roles to the non-IT staff. Uh, I'm gonna turn it back over to Dave, but thank you. Great, thanks, Cy. Giving someone access to Jamf Pro is relatively easy. You've seen the potential for creating the accounts. They can access Jamf Pro from many different type of devices. And we could give them full access to just go right to Jamf Pro, log in, and then have to navigate around to the tasks that they want to accomplish. And certainly, if you're giving someone a lot of tasks and a lot of capabilities, they're likely going to want to go ahead and go right into that and have some training on how to navigate around and find what they need to. And really, that's just understanding some basic workflows. We can take those workflows and lay them out into step-by-step -step guidelines for someone and recognize that I, I like to start off doing a visual thing so I can really see where I'm going. And I recognize that some people prefer that, you know, more laid out outline format. But really what I'm trying to show is here, it's, it's just a matter of several steps. And we can actually eliminate some of those steps with what Cy alluded to earlier with creating a web clip. Because if I create someone a direct link right to that capability, I can eliminate several steps and get them right to the piece that they want to accomplish right then and there. And that's an important concept when you're trying to make it be only a few clicks. And if it's something that a person only needs this one piece, like modifying a static group for a camera, they don't need to go navigate in and go have to find where they need to get to. They can go right to that static group. Now, I've also heard the notion from some people that are in the IT departments or usually those that work a lot just with the IT department that maybe that concept was too complicated for non-IT people. What I'd like to highlight is that having been a librarian and director of technology and library and worked with a lot of administrative staff over several districts, really accessing Jamf Pro is an, a whole lot different than what someone else does in another system, either a library system or a student information system, SIS. Because imagine a school principal that wants to go talk to a certain student. Maybe they just uh, received a scholarship. Maybe they were late many days or for whatever reason, the building principal wants to go find a student. Well, they need to go into their system, their student information system, uh, log in, navigate, search for that particular student, find what class they're in, what room that class is in, and then go and, and, and verify that they checked in with attendance. And then they could walk to that class or they could call that classroom and ask for the student to come to them. Now, if you think about that, if I laid those steps out, that could be very complicated to the novice, the person who's never gone in. And the same thing if you go into my whole library and I ask you to take a brand new book you bought and go ahead and get that in the system and make sure it has some, some restrictions on who can check it out and whatnot. But if you're just going to go in and do a couple tasks, I can really simplify that. So I just want you to have that notion in your mind that many of these things may seem overly complicated, but we're going to simplify them. And one way we can simplify them is, as Sai showed, create a web clip. And so for that building principal or librarian, if they have an iPad, we can actually have the 
、uh, web clips show right up inside their self-service in a special category. I could have called this, you know, iPad management. And so they go into this section that's only available to them, and then they can download these web clips right to their iPad. And now I've put them into a group, and we can't. Place web clips directly into a group like we can do with apps, at least not yet. However, that's a pretty straightforward task that most iPhone and iOS or iPad users know how to drag things in. So I've created this group of、uh, several of the web clips that were provided down to me, and I've also put in my Apple Classroom and Casper Focus and iTunes U because you know I'm going to use those as iPad management. But now I have four very specific web clips that take me directly to something. So, for instance, I have elementary sites, and if I tap on that after logging in, and I did skip that, this is actually taking me right to that place where Sai showed that IT set up a web filtering group. Now, you might have six of these in one in one school. You might have one for each grade level. In this case, there's a, a, an approved web restriction group for fourth through sixth grade. And the point here is somebody wants to modify that list. Now this list currently only has a couple, like Sai showed. But imagine it has fifteen or twenty, and a request comes in from a teacher, say, you know, can you please add this website to that list because it's one we'll be using in class. That would normally be a work order thing that goes up to IT that has to be done at that back end. But instead, you could give that to instructional specialist, give it to a librarian, and they could go in, and all they have is the ability to. Modify or edit this, and they're going to go in and very simply, as Sai showed earlier,、uh, change that. But think about it; they just went straight to this from their iPad, and they were able to add a new URL. And within moments, that new URL is in that list. So the student in the classroom that had already been assigned to that URL restriction now has access, and that really streamlined that, this process. Same notion is、uh, that same URL list. That Sai showed setting up where it's simply a static group. The building principal who has a student sent to their office because a teacher、um, caught them being off task a lot, doing things inappropriate, going to inappropriate websites. Which, if I'm a math teacher, <laughs> if you go to any other website in class, is basically inappropriate for that context. So. In my experience, I remember years ago, a lot of teachers, some teachers, let's just put it that way, would want to take the device away from the students because we didn't have these abilities. But if I can tell that teacher, how about I move Johnny into this website restricted list, and he can only go to these 30 approved sites? Would you let Johnny still keep his iPad? More than likely, the teacher is going to be okay with that. So very easily, someone else, probably not the teacher, but a librarian or the building principal, goes to this shortcut link and modifies who's inside that static group. And they're simply going to search for a student if they need to and add them to that list, like Sai set it up from the IT perspective. But now from the end user, they can quickly, easily, just from that URL link on their iPad, get in there and do that because they they don't need to go in and navigate around. Same thing for that camera that Sai showed, going in quickly and just modifying the assignment to students that don't have the camera, for whatever reason. Maybe they they haven't、uh, achieved where they need to on the、uh, digital citizenship roadmap or plan, or they've lost that privilege, and that's an easy thing to change. What I'm showing with this is just how quick and easy someone can access these capabilities without having to know the full capabilities and navigating around inside Jamf Pro. We can also do this、uh, for just simply viewing VPP content. This was a request from a school department recently, and as soon as they saw that they could give someone access to just view, they were ec- ecstatic because that eliminated one of the steps in the process. A teacher asks if they can have a free app. Now the instructional specialist can view and see that it's already in the approved list. And that there's already so many seats been allocated inside Jamf Pro through the VPP process. So now it's just a work order to deploy it.、Uh, same thing when it comes to deploying specific apps.、Uh, maybe you're not going to give someone full capability to deploy apps, but there's a handful of apps. And the same school that asked about viewing said they had this one language app that needed to get moved around to different students. Applying that app to a static group makes it. A simple process, just like the camera or the website restricted list, of simply modifying that static group membership. 
iBooks are the same thing. And I mentioned uh, enabling loss mode and device location earlier, but I want to reiterate that. Someone can go in and put a device into loss mode, but they can't look it up. Because Putting a device in the loss mode is a capability I'd like to give to several staff. Finding that device is something I definitely want to restrict, but it doesn't have to be the IT department that has it. It could be the building principal or the librarian that has the ability to find the location. Because if a high percentage of devices are not actually stolen, they're just put in the wrong place, wouldn't it be great that the librarian could quickly go in and see the location, see that it's in room 222, and the likelihood is it got left behind and the teacher put it in a drawer for safekeeping, and that that didn't require any of the IT department's time and effort to make that happen. And that's kind of the notion we're doing here. Just like we have with self-service and our focus on end user, we want to be able to make that experience for non-IT to be very similar. We can mass customize their access and give privileges right back to the practitioner who's really at the heart of what's going on in the schools. You know, we highlighted some things today that we heard from our customers or customers are asking us about because they didn't realize it. I really suggest you jump into Jamf Nation where we got 40,000 people in there helping people with questions they have or sharing their experiences. So if you're trying to expand roles to non-IT and you want to find out what other people are doing, check into Jamf Nation. Also, as I mentioned before, I really would have somebody start right off the bat with going in and finding some of our guides that we have in our resources. If you haven't visited our resources page, the easiest way for me to go is to go down to the footer on our website and you'll find resources. But then you can start searching for things and you'll be able to get right into uh, either production documentation or quick start guides. And as I mentioned, that quick start guide is one of the places to go if you're looking for some step-by-step guidance on setting up some of these profiles or static groups. And of course, if you want to get more detailed, you can look into our um, installation and configuration guide for, for Jamf Pro. We have plenty of webinars. I mentioned that one that was put out a year or so ago that's a little bit more thought leadership on how to bring an organization together, what are some of the priorities they should have, how can leadership work together to to bring this collaborative type nature, and that if you want to understand some more very specific things, I really suggest you take a peek at some of our webinars. If you just have a general question or an immediate question, you can always go on and and chat with someone from Jamf. Uh, You have a Jamf buddy if you're a customer. And we have people like Cy who are are always available and multiple times a day showing our product to uh, people interested in Jamf Pro. Thank you very much for taking your time today to to hear about some of the abilities for enabling the instructional non-it crowd with Jamf Pro.